Rose Stein here. Welcome. We are going to be talking about the most important thing to your weight loss journey. And that is how, oh, how do we get our family and our friends on board with us so that it can be fun and easy and simple. I'm going to show you how effective communication can transform your entire life. And it's not really what you think. I promise you're going to be surprised pleasantly surprised. So grab a pen and a piece of paper over the next 18 minutes, we're going to dive deep and make sure if you find this valuable, which I know that you will go ahead and subscribe and like this video below and make sure that you leave me a comment because I want to hear from you. One of the things that comes up quite often, and sometimes I, I forget about it because I'm so interested in like helping the person, helping the woman and forgetting sometimes that there is a whole community that surrounds that beautiful woman. You have a whole community. You've got friends and you've got family and you've got people that you interact with every single day. And sometimes they can be like amazing assets and super supportive on our journey. And sometimes they can do quite the opposite and be what I lovingly call saboteurs, right? Our diet saboteurs in our life, our, our health saboteurs. And of course, they're not doing anything intentionally to hurt us most of the time, um, but they're just doing what they were kind of trained to do in that relationship. So there's a few things that I think is going to be incredibly powerful and helpful for you along this journey as you are continuing to make positive changes for yourself and continue seeing that light at the end of the tunnel and behind that light, in that light is you feeling vibrant and alive and healthy and really good at whatever weight that you land at and being intentional with your food and creating health and vitality, optimum health and vitality so that you're feeling really good. And of course, your clothes fit, you're feeling confident and comfortable. So let's get to it. How do we get the family on board? Because obviously, if we want something to change, we've got to make a change. And typically, when we're talking about weight loss, especially for women, it, we're going to be talking about changing the way that we eat. We're going to be talking about changing the way that we think about ourselves, of course, our relationship with other people. Really, what it comes down to is effective communication. How do we communicate what's going on for us with the people around us? And what's really interesting when you do a little bit of a deep dive into actual effective communication, the first thing that came to my mind was, oh yeah, that's right. How am I going to say what I want to say so that they can hear what I want them to hear? <laughs> and now that I say that all the way out loud, I realize that that is a limiting understanding of what effective communication is. So effective communication, the first part of effective communication is actually listening. It's not talking. It's not figuring out what I need to say so that you understand, so that you do what I need you to do so that I can feel okay. That is old thinking. That is the kind of thinking and belief system that kind of got us stuck in this rigmarole of, of trying to figure it out on our own and then hoping that other people just do what we want them to do, but not actually having effective communication in a relationship. So when we're talking about listening, what that means is if somebody is not being supportive of you, let me give you an example. So one of my, my clients, she made some changes in her life that were pretty dramatic in terms of the way that she was eating. And it was really interesting because during one of our coaching calls, um, or one of our calls, her husband like popped in. He's like, Hey, can I share something with you? And I said, of course, what, what's going on? He said, I just want you to know how really hard this has been for me. And I was like, wow, I, I know that it's a challenge, but I hadn't really considered from his perspective before. And I said, tell me more about this. And he said, well, as my wife is making these changes, I mean, I, I knew that she was doing that. And of course I'm supportive. And of course I love her. And of course I want her to do whatever it is that makes her feel good. But you have to understand, I like our, a big part of our relationship was built on drinking and eating together. 
And I didn't know what to do when we got into an argument and I couldn't bring home cupcakes or if I would bring home cupcakes, it actually would make the fight worse. Like if we got in, in an argument or whatever it was, he was like, I, I, I used to soothe a lot of our, um, you know, if there was anything going on between us with, with food or alcohol, he's like, I didn't know like how to have fun. I didn't know how to celebrate with her. I didn't know how to show her that I care. Like it was a total transformation for me that I didn't understand. He's like, and at first, honestly, it made me really angry. Like I, I wasn't able to identify and understand what it was that was going on. I didn't even know the words to ask, to say, how do I then show you that I love you? How do I show you that I'm sorry? How do I show you that I want to have some special me and you time together? How do we celebrate? Like, how do we do all of this without the kinds of behaviors that you're not really engaging in anymore? Like, what does that mean for us? And I was like, oh my goodness, that's so powerful. That's so incredibly powerful. Thank you so much for being willing to kind of like move through all of that and find the words for the frustration. Because for the first several months, it just came out as anger. It came out as frustration. It came out as, what are you doing? This is stupid, <laughs> you know? For my client, she just had to like, okay, I don't need, I don't know the words either, right? Like there wasn't, a an understanding of like what was actually going on here like she's like I didn't even know really what to expect I just knew that I had to do it or I was going to die right I had to do it for my health like I had to do it for my sanity and I didn't care whatever else was going on but like now that I'm realizing it I I didn't realize that if I had just listened right? Not only to myself, but to what is underneath the frustration, the disappointment, the wanting the person to eat the cupcakes or whatever it is, right? Like, even though I told you, I don't want the cupcakes, like he still brings them home. Why? And you got to understand that there is a reason behind there and digging down into what that reason actually is. It's usually some kind of lack of communication or frustration or just not knowing what else to do because don't bring me cupcakes is not very powerful. So the way that the mind works, most of what we do is subconscious. It's kind of just habits and patterns, right? It's, it's, it's the way that we kind of grew up and how we understand ourselves and ourself in the world and our relationships and all of that. So our subconscious mind, it doesn't totally understand the word not because the way that it works, it works in feelings and images and pictures and stories. And so when we say, don't do that thing, it's kind of like, I'm going to the party, but I'm not gonna eat the cake. 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 I get to the party. All I'm thinking about is the cake. And even if I somehow make it through the party without the cake, I'm stopping at Safeway on the way home getting a cake because all I've thought about is freaking cake. We've all been there. So a really way more effective way is to go, okay, if I'm not thinking about the cake and I'm not eating the cake, what am I doing? Well, goodness, I mean, that opens up a whole other story. That opens up a whole other movie to play. That opens up a whole bunch of opportunities that I hadn't even really thought of because I was just like, don't eat the cake. It's the same thing with children because children, when they're young, they're like 100% in their subconscious mind. Like they're not rationalizing and reasoning and reasoning and thinking about the future and thinking about the past and trying to put things together. They're like just straight up in that mode. So like they walk through the door and they slam the door and you go, don't slam the door. Then the next time they walk through the door, they slam the door again. You're like, I just told you not to slam the door. Well, a much better way is to say, honey, when you walk through the door, if you were to grab your hand, the handle, and like really slowly close it so it's so soft and gentle, it would make mommy so happy. That is a story that's filled with emotion. That is clear, specific guidance and direction. And that is exactly what we want in our relationships. I want to know exactly what the heck is going on and what I can do better. If it's not a cupcake, then what is it? What is it that's going to let you know that I care about you? Something that I can do, something that I can buy, something that I can show you, something that I can give you. Do you want a poem? Do you want flowers? Do you want a massage? Do you want to have some time to have some quiet time? Like be very specific about the way in which you can take food 
out of the equation or drinking out of the equation or whatever that stuff is and actually get to what's underneath, which is the love and the connection and the care. Okay. So number two in effective communication is our non-verbal cues. Oh girl, again, it's not even about us speaking. Well, I need to tell you how I feel and what I need and what I want, right? It's like, what, what are we saying non-verbally? What is our inner feeling and our inner dialogue? Like, how have we navigated the way that we think about our body, the way that we think about actually eating fresh, alive, and vibrant foods on a regular basis? What about the meditations? Like, what are we actually doing in our life? How have we set things up so that it is invigorating to us, that it's exciting for us, that we look forward to doing all of the healthy things that are gonna give us the life, the mind, the body that we actually desire. What are we saying non-verbally in our actions, our emotions, our patterns, right? What is going on here and how is that communicating to the people around us? And sometimes it's not, you know, like the nonverbal kind of comes out in the verbal, right? When someone would say like, oh, you know, are you on a, a, you know, can you have this? Or you want a little bit of this? It's like, oh no, I need to lose some weight. Oh no, I'm on a diet right now. Or, or, oh, maybe just a little, it doesn't matter. Right. So those sorts of words, but it's always backed by what is our nonverbal action? Are we actually sticking to it? Do we actually have a smile on our face? Are we actually getting the support that we, that we need? And that we deserve? What is it that we are doing with our emotions that people are sensing? And of course, no one wants us to suffer. God bless our family and our friends. They absolutely just love and adore us. And if we are suffering more by being on whatever diet, they're like, F that, just live a little. I mean, that's their job is to support us in that way to be and feel our best. So when we are really clear about why we are doing what we are doing. Why? What is the benefit? Not only for us, but also for the people around us. For example, like for if you know your husband or your wife or your lover, if you are it's like, hey, you know what? Like when I get your support in doing this, when I get your support, I then feel better in my body. I feel like I have more energy. I want to go places with you. I want to do things with you. And I feel like pretty sexy. Right? I mean, that, that is intriguing. That is awesome. For my son, it's really about my energy to go play with him outdoors. So he is always going to be more motivated to help me do anything that is going to give me more time to spend with him and more energy to do the activities that he likes to do. So being really clear inside your own heart, inside your own mind, why? Because if it's just to lose weight, that's not super motivating. I'm sorry, it's not. You have to continue to think deeper. Why is the weight loss important? And I'm just gonna give you a couple of examples of things that are like important to me. Why is the weight loss important? so that I have energy and I feel good. Why is it important to have energy and feel good? Ah, so that I'm not like, you know, stuck in my room, stuck on Netflix. I can actually live my life. Why is it important for me to actually live my life so that I can be a good example to my son? Okay, why is it important for you to be a good example for your son? Well, he's my, my, love of my life. He's my little nugget. He deserves the absolute best. And I want him to be proud of me. Okay. Why is it important that your son is proud of you? Right. Do you see, because as we dive deeper, asking ourselves, why, why, why? Because if it's just to lose weight, that is not sustainable. That is not motivating through the emotional upheaval that comes when we make any change in our life. It's not just, oh, you have to eat good because you are overweight and you're unhealthy. That is the, 
it doesn't even matter what the change is. It doesn't matter if it's a positive change. It doesn't matter if it's something that we want. It's not, it doesn't matter if the whole family wants it. Change is a challenge because we have these habits and patterns of belief that have kept us doing whatever it is that we were doing whatever the behavior was. So as we're creating something new, stuff comes up. And so to stay clear, to stay focused, to stay on track, to actually get what you're looking for, to feel healthy and vibrant and alive, comfortable and confident at your, in your body, you must know your deeper why, deeper than weight loss. It's got to go seven layers deep. Keep asking yourself that question as you go to the next one. Why is that important? Why is that important? This is a written exercise. I highly recommend that you take a journal and you do this for yourself because then your whole nonverbal communication transforms completely. You're no longer fighting yourself going back and forth and the other people can feel it. And they're like, not really sure what to do. So let's just eat because that's familiar. And that makes the most sense. When you are non-verbally consistent and congruent with your own self, it is a very powerful tool very powerful in getting the rest of the family on board because at that point, it doesn't matter what they do or don't do, you're going to do you. And then they're going to see that confidence build in you and it's going to be attractive. It's very attractive. All right. And number three, last but not least, written. Ooh, powerful. Get it on paper. Journal it. What is it that you want? What do you really want? If you had the kind of support from your family that you dream of, what would that look like specifically? And every time that you get to a, well, it wouldn't be this and it wouldn't be this and it wouldn't be that, that's good as a frame of reference. But remember, the subconscious mind doesn't really support you in the knots right? It wants to know what you actually do want because the absence of something is not the same, right? It is not the same as actually having something. So be very clear and very specific of what it is that you actually want, what it would look like, what it would feel like, what the benefit would be for you and for them and write it down. Maybe write it in a letter to them. Maybe you don't even give it to them. Maybe you just burn it but you need to get it out pen to paper. There's a part of the mind, specifically the subconscious mind, that begins to flow and that you can communicate with when you have pen to paper. It is very powerful to just journal that out. You don't want a lot of thought exercises because thoughts just kind of bounce around to other thoughts that are similar in frequency and vibe. And so if you get stuck on a negative one, it just bounces around to all the negative ones and then you just end up super frustrated. So don't do that. All right, the very last thing, and it's not on this list, but this is very powerful, right? Effective communication is about listening to the other person and yourself. It's about nonverbal communication. So being congruent with what it is that you want and actually getting it written down and on paper so you can get be very clear about where it is that you're going, why you are going there and what the benefit is. The last thing is if you really need some support and help with this, ask your coach, ask your health coach, get a coach, get a health coach, go through some of these with them and begin to flush out what it means for you to live the dream that you are dreaming. This healthy and vibrant and alive, buttoning your jeans, feeling really good in your body, being consistent with your health goals and not having to like white knuckle it and lose weight all the time. This is for you, girlfriend, and I'm so excited. This is such an incredible journey. I love you so much. So make sure that you leave me a comment below. I would love to know your thoughts, your ideas, different ways in which you have used effective communication in your life and what you are willing to do and try on today to help you on your health journey. I love you so much. I'll see you later.